Well, it's time. We have worked a really long time on this quilt. All the pieces and parts have come together and I am really ready to quilt the quilt. So I want to take you through the steps as I go. So I'm going to take you through just a little bit as I go. You're going to see how I maneuver the quilt and how I try to get the quilt inside this big um, section here on the machine and all the different designs that I do. I really want to show you all the different parts of quilting your Learn to Quilt quilt. So we already have done the stabilizing of the quilt on here. So here you see the line of stitching, and I did this line of stitching all the way around the entire quilt. So that has kept everything square that we worked so hard when we basted to keep it straight. That's gonna help keep it straight. Then I came in and on each one of the borders, I did the same thing. So I did my line of stitching here. So I've got straight lines here, here, here. Throughout the quilt, I've done the straight lines. Then I've come to the middle of the quilt and continued those straight lines. So I'm gonna go into this section here. So here is a long straight line. It's time to quilt that long straight line. So I've got my invisible thread in my machine. I've got my walking foot on my machine because I'm gonna be doing straight lines. I get everything smoothed out. Oh, and you're working on a big table the biggest table you possibly can get. You wanna put your machine on the bottom right hand corner so that your quilt can float all out on the rest of the table. Give yourself a lot of space. I'm gonna start right here. This is a straight line that I have to quilt. I have my invisible thread in because I'm working in the ditch. When I come here, now with this machine, I don't have to do my starts and stops pulling the bobbin thread up because this machine has a really good thread cutter. So if you don't have a good thread cutter on your machine, you're going to bring your bobbin thread up so that it comes to the top to cut it off. With this machine, I don't have to do that. I'm really lucky. I'm going to start with a very small stitch, five or six stitches. Then I'm going to dial up to about a 2.5 stitch length and it's time to quilt. I'm just gonna keep continuing going straight and you'll see that my hands are holding the quilt in place as I go. So my hands are really close to the foot and I'm almost pulling the quilt away. And that kind of helps keep everything nice and flat while I'm quilting it. You need to stop the machine when you've come past your hands. You're never gonna be with your hands out here while your machine is running. You're always quilting within the hoop that your hand makes. And on this machine, I have the ability to make the needle stay down. So every time I stop, the needle stays down. So if I've gotta do some mover, maneuvering around with the quilt, I don't need to worry about it moving. It's gonna stay right where I left it. Now you will notice that sometimes, especially when you're doing with your walking foot and you're doing straight lines, there can be a tendency, no matter how much basting you've done, for the top layer to start to walk forward. And you will notice that when you come up on a portion of the quilt that's already been quilted. So I've quilted this section here, so it's stationary. As I come quilting to it, the fabric will want to bunch, so I'm gonna be put my hands even closer to where the needle is to hold the fabric in place, to not let it walk itself forward as I get to this little area. When I get to this area, it's time to turn. Whenever possible, you don't want to literally cut the threads all the time. You wanna turn and make it one continuous quilting line if possible. So I've gotta move the quilt. Shove this in here, get everything nice and flat. I've turned it, I'm ready to go. Yeah. 
Now I've already continued this long line, so I get to stop here. I'm gonna dial down to almost zero and cut my thread. Now I've gotta go back and do that long line on the other side of the red. You'll see that there is no easy way to move the quilt around. Don't imagine that just because you get a machine with a bigger throat here, that you're going to be able to easily move the quilt around. This is a big quilt. This is gonna take a little bit of effort. So you need to put on a good movie and watch the movie, take your time and relax. Now I have been told by some that a glass of wine is also helpful. I'm not recommending that, I'm just saying it's an option. So I'm coming here to the next beginning, needle down, some small stitches. Oh, my thread came unthreaded, I need to thread it up again. The problem with invisible thread is it's invisible. So threading an invisible thread into this needle, not the easiest thing you'll ever do. Oh, I found it, yes. There it is. Can't believe I did that on camera. All right, now I'm gonna take the little stitches, dial it up to my 2.5 and continue. Needle down. So I've changed my thread to a colored thread and I've put on my free motion spring foot and I'm ready to free motion quilt. What you are gonna notice when I do the free motion quilting is with the straight line quilting, I had to muscle the quilt around to actually be doing the straight lines. With free motion quilting, you don't have to do that so much. So it's really the most important thing is the speed of the machine and the speed of your hands moving at a comfortable pace to keep the stitch length consistent. So I'm gonna start here in this corner and I've already thought about the design. I'm gonna bop around the square and come in and do a swirl on the design and continue from there. I'm gonna do the tiny stitches that I always do, but this time the tiny stitches are accomplished by just holding still, and then go. Pop over to this corner, and I'm gonna move that thread out of the way, and continue. Now I'm gonna come into the middle of this block with a swirl. And then come back out on my swirl, back to the other side. Now I'm all done with that block. Never gonna to have to come back to it again. Now I'm gonna start tackling the rail fence. And I'm just gonna do a curved design up and down each one of the rails. When I get to the end, stop and go back up again. And keep in mind, because I've already done all that straight lines, the safety pins have come out. So I took out the safety pins in that area. Now I'm gonna go back and forth on this next section. And it's just a matter of moving consistently. My machine is set up with a speed that I like, so I'm not even adjusting the speed on the machine. My foot pedal is all the way down. I'm letting the machine just run. This next design of quilting, I think I call it bopping around the block. I'm not really sure what to call it, but I love this type of design when I have a traditional block and I want the design to, the quilting design to be sort of traditional, but not so straight lines because that's just kind of boring. So this is all done free motion. And the idea is that I'm gonna go from one point 
a quarter of an inch into the neck to the um, little piece block and then back to the point. But I'm gonna do that in a continuous line throughout the block. It also is a fun kind of game to play to see if you can do the whole block without having to lift your needle. So that will be my plan. I usually start in a corner and I bop my way to the next section. And whenever I come to an intersection of seams, I do the bopping around that seam. So I hope it'll make sense as I'm doing it and I'll try and talk through it. So I'm gonna start here in the corner. I also am gonna go a little bit slower with this. I'm not gonna go quite as fast, so I'm gonna dial my machine speed down a little bit. So I'm gonna start here, come into the middle, about a quarter of an inch into that piece block and stop. What I like about this technique is you can stop at every intersection. So you can stop and plan it through. Okay, my next step is to go here and back again. And back. Now I'm to a long seam. So on this seam, I am going to S it. I'm gonna to come to the right and the left, and the right and the left. And then I'm gonna go and S it back down the other side. So each one of these seams will end up being quilted on either side. stuck a little bit. So now I go back down again on the opposite sides, crisscrossing at the intersection of that block. Now this is kind of tricky because I need to get this seam done right now. So I'm going to continue to S right through the pinwheel section of this block. the other side. Now I'm going to come back down to the edge of the block. Now I've got these half square triangles. I'm going to do both of them at the same time. Go to my next section. Another long line, so this long line is going to be a continuous essing design. Now I'm going to start quilting on the flying geese section. Now I want you to notice I already did the straight lines on either side of the coping strip. So now I'm going to quilt onto the flying geese. And here I'm going to do that bopping stitch around the blue section and then come back and do some sort of a swirl in the flying goose. Not really quite sure what I'm doing. I'll figure it out when I get there is usually how it works. All right. Now this is one of my favorite designs. This is a continuous feather. And on this design, I'm gonna go to the left side and then the right side, and then the left side, and then the right side, all the way up this line. Now I know it's gonna be hard for you to see when I'm quilting it, but I'm hoping we'll get a nice still shot afterwards to be, so you can see it. So I'm gonna start. And I also like when I'm doing something like this, I wanna bring the quilt toward me instead of away from me. Then the quilt won't get stuck up on the table. There we go. So there's the left. And to the right. 
And then when you come back to the left, try to go next to the line that you just stitched. You're not going to be on it, but try to stay next to it. Just a little bit away from it and bring the curve back. And just go left and right and left and right. As we were quilting the quilt, we were realizing that with all these beautiful, busy fabrics, you probably weren't seeing the designs that I really wanted to show you. Keep in mind that's a good thing. When you're first doing your free motion quilting, having busier prints is going to hide any of the design errors that you might make. I hate to call them errors, they're just the design bobbles that you might make. Maybe not the smoothest curved lines. So I love that for a beginner for free motion quilting. But I really want you to see the designs that I've done. So the next time we get together, I'm going to bring some solid fabrics and some nice bold threads and quilt for you the designs that I've quilted on fabric so that you can really see it. See you soon. Thanks for watching our video. If you like that one, be sure you subscribe to our channel. We wouldn't want you to miss a single video. And leave a comment. We would really like to hear from you.